Hey, this is Rachel Cunningham, and you're listening to Joyful Love, episode 102. If you're ready to bring joy and connection back to your marriage, stick around. Each week, I give you the tools to up-level your thinking, open your heart, and bring joy and fun back to your relationship. Because it's not enough just to stay married. We want to love being married. Hello, hello everyone. I'm recording live on YouTube today. So if you pop on here, welcome. I was going to record this like 20 minutes ago. I'm home alone and I start hearing my dog downstairs and it sounds like a, a person is downstairs. So I ended up going to check on him and he is seven months old and he has got, he's 50 pounds and he's got the energy of like a bear tearing through something. I don't know. Like, but I start hearing something and I'm like, I better go check and, and see what's going on. Um, and he's ripping up another book. This is the second book he's torn up this week. And I have to remember, keep my books way up high because <laughs> that puppy energy is crazy right now. But so anyway, I am 20 minutes past schedule and all is okay. There are no, as I tell my clients all the time, there are no tigers chasing me. Nothing bad has happened. I'm just 20 minutes past the time I expected. But that's not what we're talking today about. We're going to talk about how to prevent overwhelm from holiday hustle. And, you know, and, and those times when you just start to sink into the holiday blues. And sometimes it's legit. It's like the sun is not shining and we're feeling like our bodies are in need of vitamin D and all of that. But so many times those, those deep blues where you just want to escape everything, they, it ends up coming from just too much hustle and too many things to do, right? So we're going to learn how to prevent that this year. We're going to get a head start on it. And this is so important because women run themselves ragged during a time when our bodies want to hunker down and rest, right? Wintering is a, is a time to really hunker down and rest. And, and not, not just for bears, but for, for ourselves too. There's so much um, just that in the winter, like we, we want to hibernate. So, but we also, this is also a time when we want to give extra, we want to nourish our families and we want to connect with our loved ones. And we want to create environments in our homes and moments that are sweet, right? And that, and that will leave a fond memory with our family. I know for myself, I have so many fond memories of Christmas and we were not wealthy. We were broke as a joke. And my mom went to great lengths to make sure that we enjoyed Christmas. And I remember that being such a special time for us. And I don't know how she did it. I know that she, uh, I know back then there was Kmart layaway. I remember that she would, uh, she would start early, early in the year and she would put things on layaway and pay for it over time. And she was so smart. Um, and you know, and she would rob from the grocery money a little bit, but she always made, uh, Christmas such a be beautiful, big thing. And, um, and, and that was, uh, you know, giving gifts is part of her love language and, and she made it happen even during the toughest of times. And, and I have such fond memories of that. And I know so many of you have fond memories of your childhood with Christmas too. Some of us don't, right? But if you're someone who does, and or even if you don't, and you want to create those fond memories for your children during the holiday season, whether, whether you celebrate Christmas or anything else, you want, so many of us want to create that ambiance that is giving and peaceful and loving and connecting with our families. So, but we also want rest. We also want to honor our own need for uh, rest and, and, um, and nurturing our bodies as well. Right. And I believe that we can do both. I believe that we can balance the two, but we need to know how to honor ourselves and know how to respect ourselves and also know how to connect and give those to those we love without the exhaustion, right? Um, so 
We also have to know our limits before we push them to that breaking point, right? So many of us don't know our limits, right? We we think we can do 20 things in two days. And most of the time, it's just not true. Our head is in the clouds a little bit, isn't it? So, but we're going to learn today just how to uh, how to prioritize and how how to kind of look at the next few months of what you want, bring some clarity around it, and start to, to bring that balance to your mind so that you can implement it this week uh, and implement it over the next few months, right? So I had a client last year who she actually decided to cancel Christmas. And instead of Christmas, instead of gifts and decorating, uh, she decided to take her family to hang out on the beach for a week in Florida. And she found that that was her way. Like when we really worked through what she wanted, she was like, everything in me does not want to do Christmas this year. So she canceled it. And she found a way to honor her need for rest and to create fond memories with her family. And it was about the same cost as if she would have bought her family a bunch of gifts, right? And spent lots of money on decorations and food and all of that. But another client a few years ago, she loved Christmas and there was no way she was canceling it. She was very similar to me in that, right? There was no way that she was canceling it. But she wanted to experience it this time with more peace and joy and because that, you know, she was like, that's what the season is all about to me. And yet I'm not feeling it. She said, by the end of it, I'm feeling exhausted. So we worked on her prioritizing what her true desires were and making her decisions every week based on those priorities. And she ended up feeling relaxed and peaceful during Christmas, you know, instead of overwhelmed and resentful. We took a break during that last half of December. And when we came back in January, I said, okay, how did everything work? Did it all come together how we had planned for the last four weeks? And she said, yes, it was so good. It was so relaxing. It was so beautiful. So I want to share with you some of the tips that I helped uh, these two women with. And so that you can get started too on this, you know, and, and you can start to kind of think about it and prioritize these things before the overwhelm even starts, if it hasn't started already. And you better believe that I just implemented this for myself this morning. And that's why I was like, oh, I should make a podcast on this, right? I was writing down all of the things that I wanted for this season. Um, and it's a unique season for, for me because it's the first season that um, I haven't seen my oldest child since she's 20, 23. I haven't seen her since last January. And so this is a, a brand new season for me where... I get to invite my kids home again. And it's, you know, and I'm so, it it adds an extra excitement for it. And also maybe just a little bit of extra pressure, if I'm honest, to do it all perfect. So I had to sit down and, and really kind of like, I was noticing that overwhelm already. And so I sat down and I created this list and now I'm going to share, share exactly what I did with you. So, uh, it was, it was, I will say that it was super fun to practice this a few weeks ahead of time, right? Normally I don't, I, I get through Thanksgiving and then I'm like, okay, now let's, let's do Christmas. But, um, but this year I'm practicing it a lot earlier and it was, it was just such an eye opener of, oh, like I love planning. I love planning ahead of time. And this just adds to it, you know, because it is a little bit earlier than normal. So let me share with you the plan to get a, you know, to create a manageable and doable system for yourself this year. It's going to be four steps. Are you ready? Okay. Number one is I want you to decide on purpose right now how you want to feel over the next two months. So what emotions do you want to generate within you, in your body, in your mind on purpose? Is it excitement? Is it joy? Is it connected? Is it restful? Is it peaceful? Whatever it is, right? Like close your eyes if you're not driving and just imagine, you could even pause this right now and just kind of implement this right now. Like what do you want to feel? What emotions do you want to feel over the next few months and write them down? When you have them, 
Number two is to ask yourself, what are the three to five things that you want to accomplish for this holiday season? Is it gifts? Is it to schedule seasonal experiences like movies or uh, seeing lights or, you know, whatever it is, whatever your unique um, expressions of, of joy would be for this holiday season. What are those three to five things that you want to accomplish for this holiday season? Maybe for you, it's to create a pretty, pretty environment or to bake um, or to spend time with friends, right? You get to choose. Everyone is different in this and there are no right or wrong. Just what feels like um, those top priorities that you want. Choose, again, choose three to five things. When you have that, the third step is to prioritize them. But first, I, I want you to leave number one blank <laughs> because I doubt that you put self-respect in your top priorities. And I want you to put self-respect in that number one priority slot. Yes, every other desire is gonna go underneath self-respect. And you might be wondering, what do you mean by self-respect? We could mean we could look at that a whole lot of different ways. I mean this, that you are honoring your own desires, your deepest desires. Okay? You're honoring what you need as a human, as a woman, as a unique individual. You're not working until you're exhausted. Because I I don't think if you really asked your wisest self. If she wants to work until she's exhausted, she would say, no, that's not what I want, <laughs> right? I want rest. So you're, it, so self-respect is not working until you're, you're exhausted. It might mean that you commit to asking for help with things that you need help with. It might mean that you plan out your weeks ahead of time and your days ahead of time so that you know that your priorities uh, are going to get accomplished and you're not rushing and constantly, you know, just trying to do, do, do at the, the last minute. Um, it might mean that you're sleeping, right? What is your bare minimum of sleeping to really respect yourself? Uh, it might mean that you're nourishing your body with healthy foods. Yes, even if you're not starting any major health changes until the new year, how can you bring in some balance? And, and you know, even when you're eating cookies or drinking wine, and but you're still telling your body, hey, body, I see you, I hear you, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to give you some protein and veggies too, right? I'm going to give you some real food this, this winter too, so that we can have the energy to get through. Okay. This is what I mean by self-respect. It's basically just honoring your mind, your body, and your soul's needs, even while you're creating sweet, sweet memories for your family. It's hard to enjoy anything in life, be it holidays or gifts or, or your partner and kids, if you feel like shit, okay? So that is why self-respect has to be number one, okay? And no, it doesn't mean you have to make any major massive life changes with that. It can be one small step at a time. It can say that today, it can just be simply like today, I'm gonna focus on drinking a lot of water. Tomorrow, I'm gonna focus on uh, you know, eating some veggies, right? It can, be, it can be simple things every day. I'm gonna move my body every day. I'm gonna stretch for five minutes, right? The simplest of things, I think in the winter can be shoved to the side because we think to ourselves, we're not gonna start anything new until January, right? We have that thing in us that's like, oh, like this, the, the winter is the time to treat ourselves like shit. And then in January, we're going to magically change. What if it doesn't have to be that? What if it can be like a really good balance of, yes, maybe I'm not going to start anything brand new until January, but I'm still going to honor and respect my body. I'm going to show up and say, how, what do you need today, body? What do you need today, mind? And I'm going to give it to you, right? That's self-respect. So that is why self-respect goes number one. And then you can put the rest of your priorities in order after that. And I, I encourage you, don't put more than you can accomplish. If you look at that list and you think to yourself, you know what, this is probably impossible. And you feel a, a certain amount of uh, stress in your body about it. Take a deep breath. Ask yourself, 
which of these things do I not have to do and cross them off. If it feels like stress, just looking at it, find those two things or, or one thing or three things maybe and cross it off. You don't have to do it all. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trust that what you can get done is enough, right? If only half of it gets done, which half do you want that to be? Choose ahead of time. Full disclosure, I had about eight things on my list of priorities this morning. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm feeling overwhelmed just looking at this list. And, and I started thinking of all the things I was going to have to put on my husband. And, and, and I was like, we're both going to be stressed out if I, if I complete this entire list. So I cut them down to four. But the other four things I also have down as maybe I'll get to it, right? If I have the energy, if I have the desire, and only if the first four are done beforehand, right? That way I don't have to like distract myself with those bottom four. I can really focus and prioritize the first four. And then if I have time, if I have the energy, if I have the desire for the others, we can do that, right? Okay, and now for the last step, the, the fourth step, this is so important. I want you to look at look back. This is the most important step, I think. I want you to look back at those feelings, those emotions that you decided to create at the beginning of this episode. I asked you to write them down. What were they? Were they peace, joy, love, excitement? What were they for you? Now notice. Take a deep breath, pay attention to those emotions, and notice that even if you just do priority number one, you can experience those emotions every single day. The rest, the rest of the priorities is just for fun, just icing on the cake, right? But you're going to have to do a bit of mindset work to get there, right? You'll have to believe that you do enough, that you are enough, that your love is enough, that just your presence and your connection with, with yourself and with others is enough, right? That your, your ability to have fun with your, with your family and to experience joy with them goes deeper than how pretty your home looks or how perfectly you chose their gifts or how many parties you attended, right? Yes, those things are fun. Prioritize them if they're important to you. Plan them in ways that you that don't exhaust you. And don't allow yourself to think that you have to accomplish them before you experience peace and joy right now. So again, number one, choose your emotions. What do you want to feel this holiday season? Number two, write down your priorities for the next few months. Number three, put them in order with self-respect at the tippy top. And then number four, notice how you can feel every one of those feelings and beautiful, loving emotions, even if you only achieve number one, which is self-respect. And I know, you guys, I know the world is a really difficult place to be right now. It's, it's a difficult place to even give yourself permission to experience joy and peace right now. So many people, so many families are going through so much. The world is at war. Families are suffering and even dying. And it can make you want to escape it all. I get it. I'm right there with you. We cannot run from those heavy, painful emotions right now. We can't put our heads in the sand and pretend the world isn't suffering. I mean, we can, but I don't know one woman who really wants that. No, we want to be aware of what's happening in the world so that we can know how to help the world when it's in need. And yet, simultaneously, we want to also be able to be present in the beauty of our own lives and nurturing and loving the people that are in front of us every day. You know, we just learned about how to feel the heavy and sometimes painful emotions instead of running from them and burying them inside of the stoked membership. This is part of feeling those good emotions like joy and peace. 
if we stop running from the negative emotions, we can process them and we can let them move through us and sometimes with us for a time so that we can make room for the positive ones. Who knew that the secret to feeling more joy and peace in life was also to embrace the tough emotions too. I know I didn't know this until I was about 39 or 40. So if you're new to this, you are right on time. If you want help knowing how to feel it all and not be afraid of your emotions anymore and how to create a holiday season that you love, that feels joyful and peaceful, all while improving your relationship with yourself and with your partner, I invite you to go to Stoked marriage.com. That's S-T-O-K-E-D marriage.com. Go right now and join the Stoked Marriage Mastermind that's for women only. When you join, you're going to have immediate access to the classes and live coaching calls. Plus, you can join the private community to get the support that you need throughout the week so that you can stay on track in your in your life, in your goals, and in your relationship goals. If you're ready to take this work all the way, I'll see you inside Stoked. You're going to be so glad that you did. Okay, cheers to you all. Cheers to creating a beautiful holiday season on purpose. Thanks for listening to Joyful Love. If you'd like to know more about my work, come visit me at rachelcunningham.com. That's Rachel spelled with an A-E-L, Cunningham.com.